Hello, this is Lane from Great White North War Games, and I'm going to attempt today to paint a Warhammer 40k or sci-fi type game, maybe for Legion, Star Wars Legion or something, pretty much all in acrylic uh, artist inks. And so I'm going to be focusing on the Dale Rowney series, but I know Liquitex has a bunch out there. Um, so I'm using a shipping container from War Layer. And so Warlayer has the orbit system, it's modular. You can see all the holes that you can put on different um, parts of the, the terrain. Uh, this is one I 3D printed myself, and uh, I will admit there's some mistakes. And so this is gonna work out for me. Um, it's, it's a shipping container that I, I printed when I was first learning how to 3D print, but you can see that I got a whole lot of holes on the top. And so I'm just going to decide to make it seem like it's um, corroded and, and whatnot. It's been sitting there for a while. So I'll, I'll add some some browns and such. But thinking I'm going to make a red shipping container and, um, and then we'll see how it goes. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is prime this. Now I have primed this with the rattle can, but there's definitely a lot of spots that I need to get into that didn't quite um, get all the get in there. So I'm going to quickly go over with some brown, or sorry, some black um, Stin Lore. I should probably look up how to pronounce this. This is from Badger Airbrushes. This is their primer. Uh, I'm going to do a Zenithal um, prime. So I'm going to use some gray at a 45 degree angle from the top. And then I'm going to use some a little bit of white, um, the very, very top and Zenith, the keyword here for Zenithal. So um, black all over. I'm gonna 45 around, 45 angle, which will mostly cover that in the gray, but on the bottom side, there'll be a lot of shadows. And then I'll just spray directly from the top in that white so that um, I get that coverage that has the natural shadows and such. And that'll make it easier to put on my paints later. It might save me some steps uh, if I need to highlight with lighter colors and such. Uh, I don't have to do that. So um, still don't have a, a stand so you can watch me airbrush. Um, you know, my wife and I have one somewhere. We can't find it. So anyways, sorry about that. And so <laughs> down the road, I guess with more videos, uh, I'll get a little bit better set up. But here I'm still on my iPhone trying to shoot it at the same time. All right, so I've uh, just completed, it's a little, little tiny bit wet still, uh, Zenithal 45 degree spray with the gray primer. And if I turn it this way, you can kind of see um, the shadows there. And so I'm gonna now spray directly from the top, just some white. It'll probably spill onto this um, beveled edge but it might might just catch the top, you know, the little bits of these um, side rails going across and that will complete the Zenithal highlight. Uh, I have really bad lighting here um, for my, for filming. So I'm gonna do my best to <laughs> put some filters on through the video editing portion so it really stands out. But um, trust me, there's some shadows involved there and that uh, will help later down the road. All right, so the Xenothal Prime is complete. You know, I don't, and then maybe I should rethink this. I don't know how much it's gonna matter, but um, yeah, it doesn't hurt to put it in there. And uh, I'll be going over with some, some colors here in a sec, but there's my gradual shadows and light source coming from the top. All right, let's move on to what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be using, Try. I'm gonna try this. I've, I've never done just solely acrylic inks. I'm using um, the Daler Rowney inks. Um, they were recommended to me in a, on a podcast and I'm, there might be better ones out there, but I've really committed to these ones. So, um, so this is the crimson red. And so that'll be my main color, but I'm also going to be using um, probably the workhorse Daler Rowney color for miniatures. And that's the Payne's gray. Payne's gray. I'm going to mix with some red to under spray some shadows going up and then I'm gonna mix some of the crimson with that white and that's gonna be for my highlights coming down uh, after that I plan on really watering down this red really watering it down for a filter um, just to bring the tone you know the high and the lows together 
tie it in. Uh, and then uh, I'll go on to some browns and such. I do have some acrylic inks that might work and we'll see how it goes for that top kind of portion. Uh, hopefully it pans out the way I want. And then that will be it, I hope. So uh, I do probably, I'm gonna have to use a little bit of um, some washes, um, you know, for the, the rust parts. Maybe not, we'll see how it goes. All right, so some things I learned about painting this much of the acrylic ink. It does suck quite a bit. I mean, it does go a long way. Um, I, I noticed that um, I think my zenithal really panned out and uh, when I was spraying the underside, it's not quite dry there, but um, I'm starting to think, well, I probably could get away with most of this just as a, um, it's, it's really bright on the top, darker on the sides, but I'm committed to uh, trying out some some better, a little bit more definition, but as a terrain piece, I probably could have just left it. Um, being a model, I probably wouldn't have, but like a figure, you know, uh, uh, playing miniature, but uh, yeah. So I'm gonna now mix um, some red and um, some Payne's Gray, probably to um, kind of a, you know, a very burgundy-ish color. Um, and then I'm gonna spray the underside kind of at a reverse 45 degree angle. Um, you you could go highlights first, and then shadows later, but uh, I like to do shadows first and get rewarded with the, the highlights at the end. So I'm gonna mix this up and uh, you can kind of see how I did right after. All right, so got that shadow set down and so just really sprayed from this angle um, you can see really dark uh, really dark but when you turn it this way doesn't quite seem as dark um, and that's just because the lights coming down um, learned two things here uh, first this stuff is really sticky uh, when it's not quite dry and so you can kind of see with my fingertips had peeled off some of the paint. I'm not too worried because this is supposed to be a trashed um, container anyway. So, but in the future, now I know that I'll probably really make sure this thing's dry with a hair dryer uh, if I want to continue, unless I, I'm not ready to, um, if I'm not done for the night. And the other thing is acrylic inks are really watery. And so uh, you really got to watch your hand motions. Uh, I started spilling just because I was moving so fast. And, and so if you got a pretty full cup, then you're gonna spill a bunch. But um, I mean, I think I accidentally spilled some on here as I was painting. Just kind of used it to spray in to the cracks, kind of like a, a shade, but um, it's okay. It's supposed to be a trashed um, shipping container. Not too worried about that. Kind of glad it happened on this, on this go. So I'm gonna use a hair dryer to blow this down. Just get that stickiness off. And then I'm gonna take um, some of the red and mix it with the white and then spray it from above with the other angle, 45 degree angle. It's gonna come out a little pinkish, I know, but that's okay. Um, just speaking to what I did last time, uh, the reason I had so much in my cup is I put way too much Dealer Rowney uh, Payne's Gray in there to begin with. And so I learned also that you don't need much Payne's Gray to really darken that color. Um, just a word of the wise there, it's kind of maybe hopefully you watch the whole video before you do this. But so now I'm going to mix these two colors together, put that in the cup first. Um, I might do a couple passes, so a little bit of white and then a lot more white on the next go. We'll see how that goes and then um, I'll show you how I did. Oops. All right, so uh, I've gotten one pass with um, really pink. It looks like he's some... <laughs> something you give away on Valentine's Day or something. But um, so from the top, it looks pretty pink. But when you turn it to the sides, you can start to see my shadows that I did before versus um, the highlights that I'm now adding in. So I'm probably gonna add a bit more white and I didn't add much white in before. Uh, I'm gonna add a bit more white and probably again, one a little bit more white. Uh, I'm gonna focus more on this top part here coming up here and then maybe on the, another almost really white. I'm probably just gonna focus on these cross beams or something like that. Um, so that when I do the filter, when I do all that red, it'll really come through. All right, stay tuned.
All right, I doubled the white on the, just on the top. So I only did um, the top part. Uh, I didn't go on a 45 degree angle. I was just really spraying from this direction here. Uh, it's not quite white enough on top for me yet. So I'm gonna increase the amount of white, probably double even. And then uh, I really wanna push that to uh, almost a pure white at the top. Um, my pot is getting pretty full though. Um, so I shouldn't have put too much red in the, in the first place. Um, so just learning experience here. Don't need as much of the base color as you think. Um, but anyways, I will take another crack at uh, getting this really uh, more highlighted here for you. All right, so really pink and whitish on top. I think I'm pretty happy with it. Um, so now I got this really ridiculous looking model that I said I was gonna paint red and it's turned into this um, St. Valentine's treat. But um, what I'm gonna be doing here is taking a really, probably put a few drops in, in, uh, in a cup, mix it with a bunch of water. Uh, I don't know the exact ratio, I'll figure it out as I go. Um, and I'll be spraying um, that over top of everything. And in between coats, I'm gonna take my trusty hair dryer and I'm going to, uh, on the cold setting, so on mine I have a, oh, I just took our old crappy uh, hair dryer um, once my, we got a brand new one. And I'm gonna hold the cold button down so that it's blowing air that's cold, otherwise I'm gonna melt. This is PLA plastic, which is really um, sensitive to hot temperature. So anyways, yeah, I'm gonna keep doing that. Maybe not so much on the bottom. Um, I am gonna spray a little bit on the bottom. If you're playing a game uh, such as uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol where the, the terrain is, you know, they can be thrown at, um, at people, um, some of the superheroes can chuck terrain uh, depending on the size. Um, you might have a turn on the side and you might want to, oh, uh, I really need that. Looking nice a little bit so it's not just black undercoat. Um, believe it or not, I, I did do the the shadows all under here, but which I don't normally paint my terrain on the bottom, but I did this time. And so here's hoping that my filter, um, my red filter is gonna really come through and and really tone everything down so that it looks uh, like a really nicely highlighted terrain piece. All right, there we go. So we got a filter. I guess the really the secret for the filter is knowing when to stop because if you keep going, you're gonna undo everything, all the highlights and shadows that you put in there and you're just gonna go back to square one. So make sure it's really watered down, assess after every um, hair, dry, hair dryer going. Speaking of hair dryers, I was bragging about my crappy hair dryer. Guess what? As soon as I bragged about it, it didn't even work anymore. I tried it in different plugs. So then I had to go and get my normal hair dryer, which is not the greatest in the world either, but it is twice as powerful. Uh, it started knocking everything around, knocked my cup over, dropped my phone. It was just sheer chaos here for a bit. But uh, if I can put this kind of over on with my sh pile of train shame over here, you can kind of get a sense of just kind of the highlights and the shadows. I think it turned out pretty good. Um, and I think it'll stick out pretty well. Now I'm not done. I, uh, if I was doing a brand new train piece, like it's supposed to be a brand new container, I might say I'm done. But uh, I wanted to explain all these mistakes I had on top from the 3D printer process. Um, and if you're really interested in, into 3D printing, I didn't have enough layers on the top layer. Um, I think I needed more than what I had and so it just um, fell in. But anyways, I'm gonna use like um, some different artist inks here. So I have, um, I'm gonna focus with the De La Rowney Sepia. It's kind of a uh, brown, a really, you know, light brown. Um, that will be my start. I probably been gonna Actually, maybe I'll, I'll I will use some Agrax Earth shade from Citadel just kind of around the The parts that are corroded or maybe make the whole top look, you know shaded in so that it's um, Stands out like it's been weathered uh, So then I'll go with the sepia and then a little bit darker is the burnt umber and um, I'll use that kind of as just here and there, and we'll see how it looks. I, you know, I'm a teacher, if you didn't know that, I'm a teacher, and I always tell my students, failure is good because you learn from your mistakes. 
I'm gonna try this. I've never done this before, so I'm gonna see how it looks, and if I don't like it, oh well. Um, I think it's, I think it'd be fine. It's not like this was a very expensive piece of terrain in the, in the long run, so uh, we'll go step by step here. All right, so I put some earth crack, earth, what is it? Egg cracks, earth shade, earth cracks, <laughs> earth cracks, egg shade, no, er, uh, egg cracks, earth shade. Uh, I put it mostly on my printer airs. I did take a hair dryer to it. Uh, it looks pretty rough. Um, it definitely looks like it's been corroded a bit. Um, I probably should put some more on the edges because um, that would be natural, right? So I'm gonna go back and put some on the beveled edge here, probably here, so it looks like it's been rained on. I'll probably drip some of the sepia, make it look like the, the corrosion has been wearing down. And uh, we'll see we'll see where we're at uh, in a sec here. All right, so I got, um, just trying to make this uh, rusty kind of look uh, without that Typhon corrosion by uh, Games Work or Citadel Paints. Uh, I did find that the, surprisingly, the Burnt Umber turned out a lot better. It had more of a brown to it. Um, so I used that kind of on these, these edges that it would naturally pool on. Um, kind of along the bottom and so just trying to make a bunch of drip kind of thin kind of things there so I mean up close yeah it's not that great but from a distance it looks like a, a rusty container um, I guess what I really need to do is do a little bit of metallic um, edge highlighting just in the corners like uh, you know this was a metal container but it, you know it got scraped and, and such so I'll probably finish it off with that and just leave, call it our day. Um, and so there we go. All right, so I did uh, a little bit of metallic, so I'm not sure if it's gonna come through, um, but I just edge highlighted really roughly, um, sometimes following the, the, the corrosion lines, sometimes not, but um, just really tried to make it look like it got scraped, especially more on the top. Uh, did a little bit in the fan there, but all in all, from from a distance, I think it I think it turned out to be a fairly good experiment, um, especially using acrylic ink and uh, just going that way instead of the traditional acrylic paints um, like my Army of Vallejo here. Um, yeah, I don't know if I will use um, acrylic inks in the future, but that much. But uh, I think it definitely. Um, was fun to do and uh, I think I'm pretty happy with this now now if this interests you this is from Warlayer it's part of the uh, orbit range there I think the first Kickstarter that uh, Warlayer ever did really good terrain um, very modular um, a lot of the posts there um, there's holes all over every single piece uh, if I could pull another I don't know there's a random platform uh, you can see that um, there's posts there, and so that would sit very nicely on top. Uh, if you're interested in that, I'll post a description, uh, a link in the description to Warlayer, but also to my website, uh, Great Night, Great White North War Games, um, and you can order uh, one of these fairly cheaply um, if you're interested. If you don't have a 3D printer and have that unique piece of terrain on your tabletop. Well, thanks so much for en enduring this experiment uh, with acrylic uh, artisink and, and uh, hopefully maybe that's something you'll consider in the future.